I have a confession to make. It's a very unpopular opinion, but I have to get it off my chest. Here goes. I love math. I do. I really do. It's, it's creative and engaging and exciting, and you probably think I'm lying to you, or I'm crazy. And of course I understand, because I'm in high school, and everyone hates math. It's the worst thing ever. And of course it is, because you go to your math class, and you get this algebra worksheet full of x's and twos and threes, and you're wondering, what is this mess? Whenever in my life will I need to know algebra? My friends always ask me this. They say, <clears throat> Andrew, math is stupid. Why do you do math? It's pointless, and I don't need to know it. I do not need to know how to do this algebra worksheet in my life. And I say, you are right. Only three jobs I can think of actually use algebra. You could be an engineer, you could be a physicist, or an actual algebra teacher. That's it. No one else needs to know how to do algebra. So why do we have math class, right? And so my friends say, OK, cool. We agree. Now let's go do something interesting. Let's go play soccer. And well, it may be a surprise, but I'm not very physically fit. So I'll complain about soccer. I say, I don't see the point of why we play sports. In gym class, why do I need to know how to kick a ball into a net? I can only think of two jobs that use that. I can actually become a soccer player, or I can become a gym teacher. And I can't do a chin up. I'm not becoming a gym teacher. <laughs> But then my friends who like sports, they say, Andrew, that's not the point of gym class. You work out your body and actually get fit. You can, it can be fun and exciting. And you can play on a team and cooperate with other people. And then I say, exactly. That's why I like math. It can be extremely fun and exciting and creative. You can, and instead of working out your body, you're working out your brain and trying new things. And who says you have to be one guy with a beard alone in a room, but you can do and math and solve problems with other people in a group. And like PE class, if you're always doing drills for two hours, of course it's going to be boring. But what makes it interesting and fun is the game. And so why don't we have a little bit of that in our math class? So that's what I set off to do. With my years and years of math experience, I set, up a local, I set up a math club at a local elementary school. The message was simple. We're going to do math, but it's going to be fun, exciting, creative, and no boring algebra worksheets. So now I've talked about how math could be more interesting. But what does actually more interesting math look like? Let's try an example. Say there's a lily pad in a pond. It's a small little lily pad. You can barely see it. But this. It's the magic world of math, where anything can happen. Because this pond isn't a normal pond. The water in it is what I like to call super nutrient water. And the lily pad will double in size every day. So on the first day, just a small, cute little lily pad. On the second day, it's going to get twice as big. And on the third day, it's going to get twice as big again. And so on and so on, until on day 48, the lily pad has filled up the entire pond. So the question is this. On what day was the pond half full? The lily pad had filled up half of the pond. What day? OK, so that's the question. I'll think about it for a little bit. Now, if this were your boring high school algebra class, I might come in with my boring tie and boring math teacher glasses and be like, OK, class, today we're going to do some algebra. We're going to set some variables with x and 2s. Uh, that's gross. I don't want to do that. And we don't need all of this fancy algebra mess because the answer is simple. What's the answer? Shout it out. 47. 47. You got it. Some people get tricked and say 24. 47. And how do we get 40, 47? Well, instead of just algebra mess, draw a picture. 47. On day 48, the pond was full. And on the day before, the pond was half full. And then it grew twice as big to fill up the entire pond. 47. That's it. No algebra, no formula, no gross mess. Just draw some picture, a little bit of thinking, a little bit of playing, and you get an answer. All right, why don't we try another one? 
So say it's Friday night, and I'm bored. So I want something fun to do. Something very fun to do is to write down every single number on a sheet of paper. So first, I wrote down one, and then two, and then three, and then four, and five, and six, and so on and so on for 20 or so minutes. And after a while, my little brother storms into my room, shouts my name, and I drop my pencil. At that moment, I noticed I had written 129 digits in total. So, for example, seven has one digit, but 13 has two digits. So, 129 in total. Then the question was this: If I wrote 129 digits, what was the last number that I wrote? So, once again, wow, that was fast. <laughs> Once again, there's no formula, no algebra x or y. It's a problem for you to figure out.、Um, well, I don't really know how I'm going to approach this, so why don't we just start listing them out? We could start with writing one and two and three and four and five. So that's five digits, and six and seven and eight and nine. This might take some time,、um, but if we write down the first nine digits, we notice that all these numbers have one digit each. So for the first nine numbers, there are nine digits. So maybe, just maybe, if we wrote 129 digits, we just wrote 129 numbers because every single number that I can think of only has one digit. Wait, that doesn't sound right. 13 has two digits. So does 27. It might be a little harder than that. Well, the first nine numbers, one to nine, definitely only have one digit each. So that's nine digits. And so after that, we need to write 129 minus nine is 120 more digits. Let's just continue writing. Then we write 10 and 11 and 12 and 13 and 14, 15, and so on and so on. Now we notice that all of these numbers only have two digits each. Now if we wrote 120 more digits, and now all of our numbers only have two digits, then we wrote 120 divided by two is 60 more numbers, and 60 more numbers past nine is indeed 69. That may have been a coincidence. Okay. And you see, what makes these questions more interesting and more challenging is that I don't tell you what to do. There's no formula, no rule book. But what you have to do is you have this problem, and you need to think about it, try different methods, and draw draw a picture maybe. And that's what math is really about: solving problems. I also mentioned that math can be cooperative, and you can do it on a team. And but what what does that even mean, right? So at our math club, we have events called team challenges, and what we do is we group our students into teams, and they have to work on problems together. But here's the catch: you're only allowed to move on to the next problems if every single person in your team knows how to do the ones you're finishing. And so this creates this energy that's all focused about math, and people are excited. You're talking to the person beside you, working together, and trying to bounce ideas off each other. You might ask someone, "Oh, I don't see how you did that. Could you explain it to me?" And not only are you doing math, but you're also working on cooperation, teamwork, and communication. And these are just many of the more skills that we could be learning in our math class. So now, I've been talking about how math could be great, how we could have these teams, and we could have events and be interested and engaged. But sadly, so what do we do? Sadly, your math class isn't going to change overnight. Tomorrow, when you go to school, sadly, it's not going to be totally different.、It's, your math class is still going to seem kind of boring and pointless and redundant. And because you know what, it probably is. <laughs> but, but here's the good news: what you're probably doing is not math, because math is fun and is engaging. So where can we find that, right? So students, take any opportunity you can to look at how math can be more interesting. Sign up for a math club. Join a, a math competition. With the internet now, there's so many resources and books online. I can I'll point to one example: the AOPS.com Art of Problem Solving. And what that contains is a treasure trove of interesting math. They have problems, forums, discussions, videos, all about interesting math problems. It's basically Facebook, Google, and Wikipedia all rolled in one for math. So look at look at these websites. Try out some of these problems because I think they're a lot more interesting, and I hope you'll enjoy it. If there are any parents out there in the audience, you obviously want the best education for your kids. So help motivate them to.
try out these more difficult math, you know, help them get access to these resources. If you want to sign them up for a class, take them to a place that's not about the formulas or the worksheets or the plug and chug, but about solving problems and critical thinking and thinking creatively. These, these are the skills that your kids could be learning in their math instead of just how to be a robot that plugs in formulas. And teachers, I know that teaching math is one of the hardest things that I've ever done. But we have the opportunity to be teaching valuable, lifelong skills through our math class. The content can feel kind of out of touch or difficult to grasp, but when you bring it into the real world and make it about figuring things out and working on problems, then your students are going to learn about critical thinking, creativity, some persistence, and problem solving. And that's what could be so valuable for them in their math. So, remember, math class doesn't have to suck. And it will stop sucking when we make it fun, when we make it engaging and creative and exciting, make it about solving problems and thinking creatively and critically, and not about being a plug-and-chug algebra robot. Thank you. <laughs>